Howdy, for this video I'm going to show how to go over certain spells like Crusader's Mantle and Spirit Gardens and how to set up the effects to, to you know, get the the cool effects that really incorporate certain things like active auras and, you know, create a lot of benefit for your players to really make it enjoyable. So, for this video we're going to be uh, highlighting Boar's Bomb and Breaker, who's in my campaign, who's our cleric. Um, he's a War Domain cleric, so he gets a lot of the uh, spells that we're going over today innate for his... Uh, his domain spells. So Crusader's Mantle is the one that we're going to go over first. So for this spell, uh, what I did was is I created an effect. Um, so in this effect, um, I set it up. I just named it Mantle just to save for for time's sake. Um, I have it set the. You make sure you transfer it when I create when I added it to, you know, to put it in there. So the duration is set up for 60 seconds. Uh, and for the effect and what it does is it is a uh, it does uh, bonus damage and adds uh, 1d4 radiant damage to all of his allies so uh, that's that's the effect and once once the effect has been added to him uh, then you'll actually go into the effects and then you'll kind of tweak it a little bit more so uh, in the effect you're gonna set it up um, so I still have it set up as uh, suspended um, so same thing, 60 seconds, the effects, it adds the 1d4 radiant damage, you could put it in brackets to get the actual radiant part. So with active auras installed and activated, uh, it will give this option for this new menu for auras. And you'll check the effect as an aura, and you say yes, uh, what it, you want it to target is your allies, you could do allies, enemies are all, uh, I always just do allies, and then your 30 foot radius is what's going to create the effect with the spell. Um, so when the effect is active, it will apply those effects. Um, I usually have to toggle it on and off, but it's it's very simple to do. Uh, so what I usually do is once I, you know, have the have the spell ready to go, uh, so it's going to uh, place a measure template down uh, around him. So uh, it always just does this atomic raise. It's going to ask to do this this damage roll. I always just click no because it's going to target him for a roll. So what I always do is I will go into the templates measurement controls and I'll right click on this and get rid of this atomic rays because it is highly annoying and I usually just turn it off immediately. Um, if you just want to do something simple like how like this one does where it's just got basically just a, a simple thin kind of uh, effect, whoops, creating a bunch of extra templates here. Close please, thank you. Um, so you'll want this template to follow him, and you'll want this effect to stay on him, so that way your players can know, okay, this is the thing that I'm getting. So in order to do that, you need token attacher, so you'll use this uh, opening attachment UI, make your character selected, and you'll see the character pop up. You'll go down to your measure templates, you'll click on the template, and you'll click this top option right here, so attack selected items. Uh, of course, I didn't have my character selected again. And we'll go back to the template again, and there, there. Why are you being stubborn? Why is it doing this? Okay, now it's attached. Alright, and then once it's done, you minus out. And when he moves around, the template will follow him. So, once that's done, uh, what I'll usually do is I'll activate my effect. So, once you'll see my little, my little wings to show that he's got the mantle. So now when he moves next to enemies, so this enemy is set to hostile, this enemy is set to friendly, and this enemy is set to neutral. So when he moves up, he will give the only one guy the effect of the uh, bonus attack. So to demonstrate, so when he's normal and he attacks, and we'll give him advantage so he hits, hopefully. Okay, so he hit. Uh, just rolls his normal 1d6, nothing crazy, but when his buddy comes and helps him out, he gets that little bit extra radiant damage, and then when he attacks again, and he attacks, he'll get that radiant damage, so he got the 1d6 and then the 1d4 radiant damage, so that's how that works, it's uh, pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Uh, once I'm usually done with it, I'll delete the template, uh, that way it gets it off the map just because it's like that. Uh, you can delete it from this and right click and delete it, or, or you can, however you delete things, you just hit the delete, delete button, my mouse is programmed for it. 
Uh, but I also have a mod, I have a, a uh, macro set up at the bottom that if I click it, it just deletes all templates on the on the map. So it's really good if you have a bunch of templates and you're trying to get rid of them all at the same time. But if you have some that are staying and lingering and you don't want to do that, it's not always the best. So, all right, now to go over Spirit Guardians. So for Spirit Guardians, I had a little bit more issues because it has an ongoing effect of rolling uh, the damage dice for anything that comes into contact inside the bubble or anything that starts its turn inside the bubble. So. Uh, that was that was the hardest thing to kind of find a workaround for, but I figured out something that worked eventually. Uh, so what I ended up doing is so for for the effect itself, um, I make sure I get a cool effect. So I'm using J JB2A's uh, Patreon, so I use this cool yellow and green or yellow and blue uh, picture, which use the use the Web M1, not the Web P. This is just a, like a still. This is actually like the moving picture. Um, and I, I'll save that for my my spirit guardians picture, uh, and then but for the effect of spirit guardians, anything that fails its wizard saving throw takes three d8 radiant damage, and if they save, they take half damage, and if they are evil character, then they take necrotic damage. This is the character that is casting the spell. So if you're a evil character and you're casting spirit guardians, it's going to do necrotic damage. Um, but uh, so my guy is good, so he's going to do radiant damage. So, but with the spell, so the thing that is whenever a creature enters the area for the first time or starts its turn in there, it must make that wisdom saving throw. So the spell is only going to proc that first time only. That's all it's going to do. So it's going to drop the template, it's going to proc the spell, done. Then, so what I ended up doing, so I ended up creating a new spell. Um, it has the same ongoing effects of the ability, but what I did was, is I have it set up to just do the wisdom saving throw and then roll the radiant damage. I have it set up for the wisdom uh, saving throw, what the DC is for him, so his is 14. Um, and I just have this so that this can be targeted to any character that I want to do it for, and it'll roll it for them. Um, and so that's that's what I did for this to, to create the ongoing effect. So the way this would work is, so um, I still haven't found a good workaround for if, I, if I'm doing the bubble for the first time, and if I target, uh, I do my spell templates. I have it set up so he uh, will target himself when I when I do it. So if I don't roll the damage, it's not going to hit anybody in the bubble. So if he casts on himself and he's surrounded by enemies, if I don't do it, then he's not gonna he's not gonna hurt the people around him. So when I do that, it, I I have to target my guy, but I just I, I heal him instantly, so that doesn't you know affect anything. But with the template, it does that stupid atomic ray, so I always turn it off, and you can actually see the really nice effects. I've, I've messed around with mess to try and figure out why it still does it, but I haven't been able to figure it out, so it's really annoying. So going back to token attacher, you're going to have to attach the, the aura around him again. So you go to your spell templates here, attack it to the enemy. Okay, attach, attach. Okay, now it's on him. Minus... Okay, so now when he moves around, he'll have his aura on him. So, for a good example, he moves up. So, for whatever reason, he decided to not cast Spirit Guardians first before he uh, before he is surrounded by enemies. He did it before he entered combat, and then he moves up to these enemies. So, to get all of these enemies, and we'll switch over to his character uh, to uh, demonstrate. And it's going to roll a bunch of dice, and I apologize. The only bad thing is it uh, it triggers everything at once. So if you switch away, you're gonna get bombarded by lots and lots and lots of dice just like this. Which it is kind of funny watching it fill your screen up though. So uh, I have his setup. I just created a macro on the bottom bar, but then I also have it in the spells that he can activate it that way. So if he say targets everybody that's now in this bubble and he does the spirit guardians, it's gonna ask to roll normal and. So all three failed their save and will take 12 radiant damage. And then these two, which were unwounded, are now hit. So uh, he can't click on them. But And then on my, our end, we can see you know what the damage was done and what all the saves were. So, but that's pretty much it, and that was, a, that was the easiest way that I could figure out to create an ongoing effect of Spirit Guardians, because I, I really wanted it to be very easy to for him to, to hit, not have to really worry about it, and just be kind of idiot-proof. So, I mean, all he's got to do on his turn, if there's anybody in that bubble, make sure they're targeted, hit the button, done, and it'll take care of the rest. So... 
uh, that's pretty much it. Um, I think it's a it's a nice little fun way to, to make the game a little bit more enjoyable and then just kind of make things a little bit more simple for yourself. But uh, if you have any other questions, just let me know. And until then, you have a good day.